come together. That's what music does for everyone. And of course, so does sport as well. We should have Jeff on the phone right now. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Russell. How are you doing? Not too bad. Where are you calling from? Just at my house down in Dunbar at the moment, watching the snow coming down. I was just going to ask you the weather forecast down there. It's not as bad as it's been, to be honest, but we've had a right lot in the last 24 hours, so it's certainly, Dunbar's not usually getting this much snow, so it's good for the kids anyway. Well, good for the kids, but not good for football, if it was on, but it's not. <laughs> not, not that it matters at the moment, no, but there'll certainly be no football getting played at the moment. Well, Jeff, what about you in football? What's your background? Background-wise, I played for Dunbar United for in two separate spells for about 14 years. In between that, I spent a couple of years at Preston Athletic with Stevie Myatt up there, and then I, I finished my career about a year at Haddington. Played till I was 38, I think, which was probably two or three years too long, a lot of people would say. Till you're 38. How old are you now? Yeah, 44. Six years. What did you do in the six-year difference? I went to, I took the Dunbar United management job as, when I retired actually, so this will be my seventh season with Dunbar as a manager, but it, I, I took the job on at the time, it, it was almost out of a sense of duty I think because of my, my period at the club, the club was in a pretty bad way, a new committee had came on and I, and I took the job, didn't really have any idea what I was doing, but I, I think because of the situation I got a honeymoon period which maybe other managers wouldn't have got it. The first job, you know. And what changes have you helped to make in the club during this period of time? I'd like to think I've made the club significantly better on the park. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people are part of that journey. Not, you know, certainly starting with the, the support behind the scenes on the committee who are all volunteers. But I, and when I was playing with Dunbar, to be frank, we were not a laughing stock, but we were kind of at the bottom level of junior football, and we certainly no expectations apart from just to fin finish kind of mid-table and, and I managed to ch change the mindset and bring a bit more professionalism into the place so certainly that's what I would like to think and obviously we won the league two or three years in and then we got promoted again through the, before we, at the juniors before we then went to the east of Scotland and we find ourselves now in the in the Premier League of the east of Scotland which I would class as the kind of Super League of Junior back in my, in my playing days I'd like to think I've significant, significantly improved the club on the park anyway well, the journey has been long and it has been successful. It's been successful so far, yeah, but you're, as any manager will say, you're only as good as your as your last performance. I'm certainly not counting any chickens and it's something I'm very proud of taking the club you know, forward as we have because we've, we've certainly not had the financial kind of ability of maybe some of the other clubs in and around us at this, in the region. So we've, we've had to do it in a, in a different way, which is by signing young players and getting the best out of them and maybe bringing in two or three players over the period who maybe people thought were past their best but you know we've got, we got good years out there so it's, it's been a journey and it's certainly been enjoyable How are you going to bring your team out of the COVID-19 lockdown situation? Well it's a hard one because no one really knows what's going on the reality is I, I, I haven't I, I can't tell you how many weeks it's been but since we've stopped playing we're probably now approaching what would normally be the closed season period if you like over the summer so the players are going to have long, had longer downtime whenever, if and when we come back than they would normally have had in the summer so you know there's going to be a significant period of training that's going to be required whether we get afforded that opportunity I don't know but there's going to be a significant period of training to get players conditioned to play football we need to get some friendlies arranged to get match fit again and it's it's almost like starting the season again but obviously we're, we're kind of a third of the way through we ha the boys have been working really hard to be fair to them they've been on Strava we've got Strava group growing uh, group going we're, they're really committed but how, how much can you actually do when the weather's like this and how much of it is football related fitness it's very difficult How strong is the club as regards players have you managed to keep players or even sign players to strengthen the club ready for that opening day we've managed to get you know four five maybe six players now committed for next season so that was really brought on by what happened last year when the league went into kind of lockdown in March time I think there was only six or seven games left in that, but obviously the season ended up null and void, or, or certainly there was no relegation and there was no clubs penalised, but I felt that we were penalised a wee bit because it was so difficult to bring new players in. I couldn't travel, you know, we're, we're in an area where I, I certainly wasn't going to travel when the, to meet players when we were instructed not to do so, and we lost two or three key, key players to other clubs 
over the summer. So we came back into this season with the best hole in the world weaker than we finished last season. And I was aware of that and I was hoping we could get the best out of the, you know, some of the players that we brought in the summer that give them an opportunity. But the reality is in the league that we're in, if you lose quality and don't replace it with a similar similar quality or, or better, then you're going to struggle and we found that very difficult. So I'm hoping that the players that are here this year, based on what's happening, based on at the club, based on what's happening and around the, the world at the moment, will show a bit of commitment to stay at the club and then it gives us a fighting chance to add the two or three that I think we probably need to push on. But, you know, players have got their own agendas and their own minds as well and I, I'm not one for forcing players to sing because it never ends well. But I'd like to think most of them will stay. I'm going to ask you a question. You know, transfer period for clubs where you can transfer and, and get players in and that. When is that normally in the season? At our level, we can do it at any time. It's not, we don't have transfer windows at this, at Tier 6. So, a good example is we, we signed Jamie Devlin there just after Christmas, which would have been in a normal transfer window, but we, we realistically could have gone and got him at any point if if we could have or if, if we had the finances or if the player was interested so, but it, it's difficult because there's not a lot of players going around the, the level's quite a, a, quite a good standard and to get the right quality player to come in when you're in I, I actually thought when we came into the Premier League that it would be easier to get players it's been harder because you've got to get the right quality players when you're in the lower leagues you know, it's easier to add players that will make a wee difference when you get into this top league you've got to there's a much smaller circle of players to pull from so it's really key to keep a, a squad together and add incrementally you know two three players to freshen some things up it'd be really really difficult to bring in five six seven eight which we, we've actually ended up having to do this year over a much longer period if you were looking for a player right now how easy would it be to find one is there players left clubs due to the COVID-19 is there a, a, an excess of players about there that you could have a, I would, I, a choice I would, the opposite. I would say the opposite Russell I think that players are, are looking at the situation and it's not like I can go around and or, or send people to watch games because there's not a lot of supporters in so you can't watch players you can't get a feel for players that you, you think can make a difference and, and, and I think players themselves are, are probably of the mindset well I'm here, you know, we, we don't know what's going on with the season. I've got an opportunity to stay here, but I maybe feel like there's unfinished business from last season. I maybe feel like there's unfinished business for this season, so I'm, I'm going to re-sign at the club that I'm at. So I, I would suggest there's there's actually less players going around than normal, and there isn't normally a lot. And, and certainly from our perspective, to get convinced players to travel down from the Edinburgh area down to Dunbar, it's quite a difficult sell. It's always been a difficult sell. For whatever reason, some people maybe think Dunbar's halfway to England, but it's it's just the, it's just the nature of the beast. We've got to sell the facilities and getting our license, or, or hopefully getting our license in the next few months. I think will make a big difference there. But there's not a big pool of players at the best of times, and I, I actually think it's much less at the moment. Jeff, if you if you were given next week as a starting date for the football for Dunbar United to get back to football, what would be your hardest job? What would be on your mind? What would you have to sort out that would be important? The, the most difficult thing to sort out would be player fitness and, and make, firstly getting a grasp on different levels of fitness and making sure we put together a training regime that, that suits everybody because we're not going to have enough time to cater for different levels of fitness and you know we've got a good squad here I believe wholeheartedly in the players that we've got and I, I, I certainly am I'm looking to go and add players at the moment I, the squad that we've got is is good we've, we've made one or two additions three additions actually and quite recently which have significantly improved the, the quality within the place but the, the fitness of the players after so long away bearing in mind that even before Christmas there was a long period where there, where there wasn't a lot of games getting played because of the weather I think there was only one game in about four weeks that we played and it, it going into lockdown so there's not been a lot of games played and getting players up to the right level of condition without injuring them is going to be critical and that, that really hurt us in the summer. We, we picked up an enormous, I mean it's an unprecedented amount of injuries and I'm not using that as an excuse for where we find ourselves in the league but it didn't help our cause and it was, it was some really fit boys were getting injured and it was a lack of conditioning for football and we need to be really careful that we don't go down that path again and, and end up having... I mean, at one point, you know, early on in the season, I was dragging in players that I've never even seen play to help get a team on the park. That's how bad it was through soft tissue injuries. 
getting them in condition to play is my biggest would be my biggest worry and the biggest challenge and I can only hope that the associations give us long enough to do that but that's not, not something I can control I, I think we'd need four to five weeks but I, I don't, I'd not be surprised if we get that Well Jeff, that's my questions that's my thoughts about uh, Dunbar United and yourself now, you put out a message out on uh, social media do you want to Tell us about that, or have we, or have we covered the... No, I mean, I, I, you'll, have to, you'll have to remind me what I said. I've, I've been doing a lot of bits and pieces. I mean, I, I think I gave an update to the supporters. I mean, I, I spent... A, I had to take a, a leave of absence from the club for personal reasons for about four, four five, six weeks, around about November, mid-November, till, till just before Christmas. So I've not really had a lot of engagement with the fans and, and with the players, to be frank. But when I, when I came back... I only played one. We only played one game before the with the, the weather, and I think it was just really important to to, to re-engage because the, the club itself has made huge strides off the field. You know, we've got a a really motivated board, which is a joy to behold for for me. I, I felt like for quite a period that I was kind of forcing the the agenda at the club, trying to make sure that we were going forwards. And I sometimes didn't always feel that the, the committee that was in place were able to give me that. Not that they didn't want to. But they were very short-handed, and obviously there's things happened in 2019 which I ain't going to go into on, on the radio or with my dad. But there's a lot of things went the wrong way, and the new board that have came in have brought an, a, an enthusiasm and a, and a freshness and, and an energy and a drive behind the scenes. And you know we're hopefully three or four weeks, uh, three or four months away from getting our license, and it's important that we can get a team on the pitch that can marry up with that. And, I think that we've been damaged by COVID, as everybody has, and I think that we just need to bear in mind how much pressure the, the, the players have been under. And I'm not just talking about my players, I'm talking about players as a, as a whole to be asked to play, train and play in the conditions that they have this year has not been easy. And it's not been easy to because of that to maybe pick up the right results and there's a, it's easy for an air of negativity to come about the place. So it's, it was really just the engage with the, with the with the community and, and the fans and, and also the players as well to let them know that I was very motivated if in, for when we get back to make sure that the club stays on the trajectory I feel it's always been on with me in, in charge which has been forward I'm only one person we've got a, there's a coaching staff I've just added to the coaching staff Wet Christie coming in who's a, a huge bonus for me a huge bonus for the club very enthusiastic very knowledgeable understands players, you know, and the, the, the signings that we've made uh, recently, Andy Jones, Matt McGovern, Chris Robertson, Jamie Devlin, I, th- I think we're in a really good place, but I just hope we can we can get back playing soon, but I, I hope it's done right. I hope we don't just come back because people want to play football, we have to c- do it around about the right conditions, we have to accept that there's more important things going on at the moment, and if football needs to at our level needs to take a a longer break to allow us to get back to some sort of normal then I think that's what should I think that's the right thing to happen it's not what I w- would like to happen but it's got football is not the be all and end all at the moment Well Jeff, that's what I wanted to hear and I'm quite sure that's what the club and the fans wanted to hear as well Are you having a wee chat and of course talking about football down there at Dunbar so, Jeff, it's great chatting to you again. Let's get an update once things start to get moving again and we can have another Hopefully chat. Soon, yeah. Aye, just a- any time, Russell. Uh, I, I, I'm aware we haven't spoken for a, I think the last time we spoke was just before we were playing East House season. What was a crunch game about getting into that top five to get into the Super League, which, which was a few years ago now. So, I'm happy to keep engaging with you and. Hopefully we're back playing and, and all, you know, from a mental health perspective, as much, as much as a physical health, I think we all want to have football and that hobbies and things and that team spirit and camaraderie in our lives, but it needs to be done at the right time and I'm happy to talk to you when, if and when that happens. Well, thanks again and words of wisdom as well. Jeff. let's hope that the weather changes and of course the position of football as well, not just here in Midlothian across the country so you stay Absolutely. safe uh, Jeff and have a good evening and we'll catch up with you and get an update at a later time no problem thanks Russell stay safe thanks a lot thanks very much Jeff bye